Matthias. Jason, how are you? Good to see you again. Yeah, you too, man. I was thinking the last time I saw you, I think, is when we recorded that So Bad It's Good episode. I think that was your last day that, on set. That was the last time we both appeared on camera, actually, in Germany in in an incredibly heated room. Do you remember that room? It was Oh, like, my uh, God. Sean's apartment was so freaking hot. 100 degrees, right? 100 <laughs> yeah. degrees. Uh, we finally, uh, it was the end of the film, so we felt pretty good, I thought. And I had a beer uh, mm -hmm. to celebrate your show. And I felt so happy uh, with that beer in my hand, you know, and it was so hot. And I thought, this is how you drink beer. You know, it's hot outside, inside, actually. The job is done. It's yeah. all in the can. Let's have this beer. Unfortunately, it was only one beer. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, if that had been at my house, at my studio, you had all right. the beer you wanted, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I was kind of looking forward to get hammered a little bit. Uh, you young kids out there don't listen to it. We were hardworking people that deserved to spoil themselves with a drink or two. Uh, I tell you, this movie was shot in summer, as you know, right? Mm -hmm. And as uh, we just mentioned it, and it was hot, yeah. like New York hot, hottest hot, right? And um, it wasn't wasn't always a pleasant shoot for that you know particular. Uh, circumstances that we were in with the heat, but it, it made it fun. I mean, I'm not going to well, complain. I, now, you know. I got to stand in the shade and watch. We were all, Billy and I, we were looking forward to it. You know, we haven't seen each other in 20 some years. There he was, Billy. And I'm like, Billy, you're still Billy. You know, sometimes you, a uh, time stood still for him and uh, he's doing the splits and everything. I'm saying, oh my God, it's Billy is as lethal as he's always been, you know? Still so jacked, I, man. I couldn't believe it. Jacked. Billy is a phenomena. Not only you have to know this, uh, he, he was usually big in the world with Taibo, that is a uh, workout mm -hmm. martial art kind of routine. And uh, so we, we were filming all day, you know, how it's, what's like 12 hours, sometimes longer. And he went out teaching afterwards. Yeah, yeah, he'd go train. It was like you go what? train and teach people yeah, classes. It was crazy, yeah. I said, "Where are you going, Billy? Where are you going?" Uh, yeah, I'm going to teach some classes. I'm like, I can barely walk. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, he was a machine man. Particularly when we were in Hamburg, we would get done filming down in that dungeon all day, and he would go upstairs and go to the gym and teach classes and train people, and it was wild. Yeah, well, it's yeah. wild. Yeah, I I only ran marathon for myself in the evenings. You know. 30, 40 miles. Right, every night. Bull yeah. Yeah, bullshit. Um, <laughs> I drank with the crew, night. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, I actually raced to the bed. Um, Hamburg was fun, so, huh? It was. It was a it was a really cool location where we actually shot the Kumite. And I can't believe it. It's like in the middle of Hamburg, all these amazing venues you can go to. It's a great city. Especially if you come from the United States, how 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 interesting is it? That is an interesting city, man. Particularly that strip. Uh, <laughs> there's some characters down there. If you take a walk, <laughs> this is a place you got to shoot a movie eventually. You know, it's the most famous red light district in the world. We were right in the middle, and people, tourists, come from all around the world to visit this place. So you have a mixed crowd of mainly tourists and buses and every age walking around looking at all these uh, um, venues and shows and then the girls on the street and whatnot, right? <laughs> there are it's a lot a, of hookers. A, oh, my God. It's an unbelievable lot. circus. Uh, so, yeah, try to get some rest there at night, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, heard that, I heard the crew was out quite a lot. Now I'm that is, saying that is the crew, correct. you know, the crew, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, uh, everybody was out, yeah. Yeah, it was fun um, because most of the shoot I was at a like an Airbnb kind of away from a lot of people. So I would come oh, home at great. night and just get some work done and then crash. But in Hamburg, right. I was in the hotel like we were all in two hotels. So yeah, it was just yeah. uh, it was just a fun week because everybody just got to hang out after after work. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it was a fun week, Jason. 
and we had some good quality time we spent together. If you don't know about the film business, it's that there's a lot of that time zone, you know, where um, so there's a lot of action. And then technically you have to regroup, rebuild the set, work on the camera angles, reset it. Uh, basically, the actor that was in front of the camera now is off for about an hour resetting the cameras, the light, and then the cameras go towards the other person, right? So that was very interesting. Um, that's usually when we actors, including you and Jason and I and many others, can hang out together and tell each other stories, right? Yep. I thoroughly enjoyed that part. I yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, it was uh, we all do. I have this really funny shot from the first day um, when we were the who was it uh, Draco's training scene in that warehouse. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm I'm recording somebody putting makeup on uh, one of the fighters, and I just turn the camera, and you're standing like right here looking at me. Oh, really? I, the footage is hilarious. Yeah, it looked oh, like you were funny. like like I don't know towering over me or something. I don't I don't know what we said because I stopped recording, but the footage is like oh, that's really so funny. funny. <laughs> Which is, by the way, guys, I don't know if you know, uh, there's not much towering over Jason. He's a giant. You towered right? over me, though, dude. I couldn't believe it. Like, you're big on well, film. You're really I tall. I couldn't believe it. You know, I only see you on the television, I almost said. On YouTube, you're sitting. Then yeah. you, you come across to me, you know, first time I see you, and I'm like, damn, he's like in my group. <laughs> yeah, I'm like 6'3". You, you got, yeah, what, 6'5"? Yeah, but that's the same height. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... That's the people that are eye to eye with you. Um, yeah, it's not that yeah. common. Yeah, not common at all. That's uh, a good and a bad thing, you know. Yeah, no, it is. It's just it's weird when you meet someone who's taller than you. It's like, oh, that's what this oh, is like. <laughs> let me tell you, I met a lot of people that are taller than me. Like a yeah. quick funny story, right? Mm -hmm. As this life is full of stories. So there is this movie, Helen of Troy. No, is it? With Brad Pitt? What was that movie? Troy, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, Troy. So there's this casting call going around in Los Angeles. And uh, we need a guy to fight Brad Pitt. And um, Brad Pitt works out in a gym across the street from where I work out, right? I work out in all kinds of gyms, but in that particular one at that particular time. And uh, my friend who was training Brad Pitt said, oh, you need to uh, get Matthias Hus, you know? Uh, as your opponent, Brad Pitt didn't know who I was, and um, how that ever happened, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that son of a bitch! That son of a bitch! What does he know? How many moves has he known? Anyway, so he said, "Oh, send him to Warner Brothers, right?" So my friend calls me, "Yeah, go to Warner Brothers. They're going to see you." So I drive to Warner Brothers, and I knew the guy would have to be six foot ten, and uh, so I went out, and I had special shoes made. That made me roughly six nine, six ten ish, right? That's a and, big shoe. Holy so like yeah. more an I come in peace. Kind of like that? Yeah, kind of, but uh okay, so these were like um boots with a heel already, right? And then I had some insoles put in, so the heel were almost three inches plus so five inches, yeah. Wow. Coming close to six ten, right? Um I mean that's Hollywood. You ask for it, I'll deliver. I don't care how, right? So, and I was really jacked, meaning uh, that's a while ago. So I was even more jacked than I am, right? Uh, now, basically, uh, in top shape. And I go there and I walk in there. And the moment I walk in there with my muscle shirt and everything, uh, the customer said, you're not tall enough. I'm like, there's no way. I'm, what do you mean I'm not tall enough? <laughs> right. Yeah. And she got really upset because I started arguing with her. And I said, let me take my shirt off. Let me take my shirt off. She says, no, you're not taking your shirt off. And I said, why? You need to see. You know, let me take my shirt off. She said, stop taking your shirt off. It's the first time I ever heard this. And then uh, <laughs> she says, basically, get the hell out of my office. You're too small. And uh, that guy who got the role, if you would put him next to me in real life without my heels, right, is Nathan Jones. Yeah, former wrestler. Yeah. Huge. We're talking about how's that even possible, right? So there's always someone bigger. And that I realized dude was big in Troy. I mean Oh, wasn't it? Huh? That wasn't was a it? huge man. I couldn't believe my eyes. I said the casting director really knew what she was talking about. Because there's always uh, that's almost that's a giant syndrome and then there I'm in the category of basically 
tall, normalish, like uh, Liam Neeson. Um, so many actors you wouldn't suspect are six foot five, six foot six, right? It's like you get away with it. Uh, Jeff Goldblum or whatever, you know, six five, six six, and um, and then you have the category of monsters. Yeah. We're talking about six eleven, six ten, seven foot, and stuff like that. I shared the trailer with Kevin Peter Hall, who was the Predator after Van Damme in um, The Predator. And uh, I felt like his uh, son. We shared the trailer together. His son is not even cutting it. Like his tiny little, like, I don't know how I felt like. I felt like I wasn't even there. He was so, you know, we shared this trailer and I'm looking up all the time. I'm like, holy shit, how is that impossible? You know, he was 7'3". Is that how big he was? Yes, it, yes. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. He was so nice, and I felt like how small people, very, very small four-foot people would feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's always someone uh, bigger, larger, better, more muscle, sneller, uh, faster moving, deeper split, uh, better actor, this and that. There's always someone, so let's not get too cocky. Yeah, as soon as you start to think you're the guy, someone comes along, and you're like, God, I suck. Oh, <laughs> it's just like the wild, wild west. <laughs> hey, I haven't even, uh, you know. Oh, I have so many funny scenes. I could bring this to three-hour podcast, but um, how I did this Western, <laughs> and it's like, so I get shot in the end, so we have this big uh, shootout at 12 high noon, right? And uh, I um, I was pulling my gun from this side, and he was pulling his gun from this side. And you pull it from here, you're always faster, because I already have my hands here, you know? <laughs> and I was, like, screwing around with him all the time. Where we were shooting, I already had the gun there <laughs> before you could even shoot. It pissed him off. But that's only <laughs> playing around, you know, obviously. In the end, of course, uh, all this fun and games is over. But in between the takes, I was thinking, <laughs> no one can beat this. <laughs> Which movie was this? I can't say it. Oh. Okay, then you know who it is and all this. But it, it, it was really uh, one of those fun situations. I, I've done several Westerns now, you know. And, um, yeah. Do you like the Westerns? What? Do you like the oh. Westerns? Yeah. Yeah, it's different. I, the reason you like doing cost, costume movies is the fact that as soon you're on location, you put on your outfits, no matter what it is, let's say you're a cowboy, and you get on a horse, you're a cowboy. You are, in, in effect, manifactly, a cowboy. There's not that you you start to become that person and you're surrounded by everybody that looks that way and you feel like you have the privilege to live in the 18th century because the buildings are usually original, you know, the sets, I mean, everything is original and uh, you, you really enjoy this. If you like Western, we all do because I grew up playing cowboy and Indians, right? So it's like getting paid to play cowboy. Or when I was a, a Roman gladiator, I kid you not, we're in a real Colosseum, the second biggest in the world, built with people, with lions, fighting with the swords, getting in an elevator, getting pulled up by hand. Um, you think you're an actual gladiator. So it makes it easier for you to get into the, the role. Yeah. It's a privilege because their time sort of morphs into the past and the present morphs into a new reality because everybody's in a costume, including yourself. So, again, you, you are privileged, privileged enough to live as a gladiator. Hmm. It's unbelievable. You know, uh, I, I got to tell you, I, seeing you on stage in Hamburg, Mm -hmm. Watching you get into that role where you're like a fight promoter, uh, I just yeah. had the same feeling you're talking about now. It seemed like you were just into it. Like you were really dealing with the extras a lot. It was cool. It was cool to see. Yeah, I, I got into it. And the, the funny thing is that it's not me. I, I The last thing I am is a fight promoter. Uh, it's a sleazy character, uh, yelling, you know, like over the top. And uh, I'm more like you. I mean, I like to talk, obviously, but I'm not like uh, outwardly crazy guy you know what i mean oh like right. <laughs> all that bullshit right so um it wasn't easy and i have to tell you since we talk about last committee um we were in a rather big room and I, the first thing i was asking wayne grace 
our producer, wonderful producer, by the way. I said, excellent. where's my mic? Yeah, excellent, man. Wow. So I said, where's my mic? He said, there's no mic. You have to just yell. I said, oh, my God, how am I going to excite the audience? Usually MMA and all this, they have this microphone, right? Right. So I was literally panicking in the beginning, thinking there's no way I can get a personal relationship by just yelling to the people. But however, I felt like it turned out to be better because Absolutely. he had to be extrovertedly out there in order to be heard. Yeah. Well, it worked because the extras were feeding off your energy. They were going crazy the whole yeah, week. I saw like, that. I loved it. Like, shout out to them, man. They Their energy was high for an entire week, just all Shout day screaming. Them. They were great. I I'm, I want to say thank you. As you just said, Jason, you were there. Thank you, guys. This was uh, unbelievable. Uh, this was such hard work because it's, as you know, it's uh, sticky, it's hot, endless hours. The energy level is always up uh, and then quiet. And then, come on, back, energy, energy, energy. So you, you got an idea what it means to be an actor, because quite frankly, you have to always get back to the same energy and then it's cut, right? And then you have a minute, you're quiet, and then they say, no, no, back, back, back to where you were, back to where you were. And you're like, oh my God, I'm tired, my feet hurt, or whatever, right? I need a cup of coffee, It's I haven't eaten yet. Um, for certain roles, that's not easy. Fighting, for instance. So, last comité, uh, if you unlucky enough and your fight is right there when they call lunch and you've done three or four moves already and you hyped yeah. up you warmed up and then you're out of it for almost two hours because lunch is an hour setting it up again is an hour so good luck you know yeah i remember that happened to kurt one day that Ooh, kurt, yeah, right he in the got middle the, of his fight yeah uh, that's what i'm saying i cook at the batch Thick of the end at, at the end because his, he was so into it. And then they called lunch. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, before any of you were born, I was shooting this movie Deathmatch with Martin Cove. And, uh, oh, okay. yeah, That's Martin Cove. Uh, so I am the guy in the Deathmatch. The, I'm Draco, Draco. Okay. Basically, I'm the guy nobody beats. Impossible, you know, muscled out the whole thing, you know. Arr! And um, uh, Martin Cove was playing me back then, what I played in Last Comité. Okay. And while I was shooting Deathmatch, I looked at Martin Cove and I said to myself, you know what, he's got it made. He sits there with these beautiful girls, these ring girls on his lap, you know, for like 12 hours, chewing gum, eating, drinking, mm -hmm. socializing, the whole thing. And I am fighting my ass off. And I, when I was doing last committee, I was laughing. I was saying, I'm Martin Cove now. <laughs> because mm. I'm sitting there with the two girls, drinking, eating, laughing, watching those people. Fight, you know, and now, now, Draco, my undefeated champion, just go for it, go ahead. And then let me be <coughs> crawled in the back by my beauties. <coughs> Excuse me. So I had to laugh because I thought, oh, wow, this is ironic. Next thing you know, I should get a phone call like uh, Martin Kof and uh, do Karate Kid. <coughs> <laughs> That'd be all right. Whatever. <laughs> He's doing all right, you know? You know, I remember saying that to you on the very first day, because I think the first day might have been our longest day. That was... It's that always was the long, longest. Yeah, mm. that, was a, that was a long day. But we were watching those <clears throat> guys. Uh, they had this kind of a pro wrestling group in there, that, and they were just oh, beating the shit out of each other. It's going to look great, because they were actually kicking each other in the chest and stuff. And I remember wow. saying to you, like, man, it looks like you got the toughest gig here. You're just kind of hanging out. Right. watching what's basically an actual fight unfold. It was uh, it was pretty cool yeah, to see. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, and it's the first time in my career that I'm not basically in the ring eating the crap, you know, or dishing yeah. it out. Um, I was kind of happy. I just had two surgeries back-to-back, -back, you know, so I wasn't in uh, form. First time, actually, in my life, I wasn't 100% in form, you know, in shape, because 
you just can't, you know. Um, and I thought, man, I'm going to enjoy this. There were some time constraints uh, trying to get everything done because there's there's a lot of training in this movie. There's a lot of fights mm. in this movie. Like they crammed yeah. a lot in in a short yeah. period of time. I think they have countless hours of footage. Yeah. I sure. want to mention that our director is also a DP who shot Kickboxer Retaliation, the undisputed films. I mean, this this director. He really knows how to set fight scenes, how to set them up, you know. And then Mike Muller, one of the most talented stunt fight coordinators in the world, knows yep. exactly how to capture this. He yeah, is watching him work was cool. The uh, professional, the way he scrutinizes every single take, and if it's not a hundred percent, back up, do it again, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I appreciated his passion because every day he'd come in, he's like, oh, you want to see what I got here? And yeah, yeah. bringing up video. I mean, he's just locked in. It was it was fun to watch. Yeah. So you, you just said the magic word, Jason, passion. There wasn't not one person that I know of on the set that wasn't passionate about this project. It's true. It's true. Right? It's a testament to Sean. He managed to find people who were all in. Sean is incredible. He's going to be a very successful producer. He pulled this together. He he fulfilled the promise to his fans, your fans, all the fans, that this is an actual remake-ish of the eight. It's an eighties film. He he delivered the whole thing the way he said he would, including the music, the vibe, the cinema photography. Uh, everything is what he promised the audience, and it's a crowdfunded film so i had we all had conversations with sean and sean said i i owe it to the people and i will fulfill my promises i yeah. will make this a hundred percent yeah I, without getting into into details i'm not sure how much you'd want shared but there were a lot of conversations about how 80s this movie should be and he was steadfast no i promised an 80s movie we're delivering an 80s movie. He and, did. And he did. It's, it is an he 80s did. movie. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's. Uh, I'm sure it's not his last one. <laughs> no, I, I have a feeling this is going to do pretty good. And I think there's yeah. going to be more. So uh, it's pretty sweet. And every time I hear the Stan Bush songs, I'm like, God, so good. So it's good, so huh? Good. It's so good. It's good. <laughs> it's so good. It's good. You know, speaking of, I had a couple questions I wanted to ask you about some movies we've watched of yours, um, which I don't know. Some of these I watched, I'm like, I had to pick his brain about these. Oh, really? Oh, Digital Man was such a freaking treat to watch, man. We had oh, a blast with that movie. And then I heard from you and you had an absolutely horrible experience. But to watch mm. the film, you would have no idea. It's just the movie's you fun. You would know. No. You'd have no clue. I have to say, because of your show, I'm also watching your show, by the way. Because of your that. show, oh yeah, because of your show, I rewatched the movie. I had completely forgotten about the movie. It's almost like you look at pictures of your ex girlfriend and then you romanticize it again. What good times you had, right? And uh, looking at the film again, I realized the precious moments this film has. They are everywhere in this film. There was comedy, there was action, it was hokiness. We have uh, Swayze in it, uh, Don Swayze, right? And yeah. Um, yeah. Don Swayze just didn't show up uh, with a car to the set. He was hang gliding into the set with a hang what? glider. You know, what? Well, yeah. what? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. In the desert. He just would in hang the glide to the little, set? Yeah, with a little propeller on there. Um, I was like, how is this possible? He made the movie for me. <laughs> didn't he Didn't he make the movie? Oh, he's hilarious. Dude, he's so funny in it. Oh my he God. hang in. What the hell? Where would he come from? That's so I funny. I don't know. Apparently, the Swayze family is very much into, uh, what do you call it? Agronautic? No. 
flying or aeronautics. Aeronautics, yeah. Yeah, not aquanautics. In aeronautics, um, I think the Swayze family is a fly family, a flying oh. type family. So uh, there's so much in it. And um, the only thing I have to say was hard. It's shot in the desert. So it's the average temperature in the Mojave Desert is 120. And I'm having a diving suit on underneath a real diving suit you go diving with, you know. Uh, and so because the material of that suit would rub you raw. And then um, I, I had that horrible scene with my dialogue. <laughs> I got my dialogue at one time, and it was like 1,000 takes. The only and that dialogue was in the I book, had, right? I think you put that it's in, in the book. book. I, it's like, I, to that day, I'm glad it happened because I never, ever not know my lines. Uh, but to really outline it, really, so it's like uh, I play this uh, robot, the digital man that kills people. So Not, not a Terminator. Definitely not. No, a not a Terminator. <laughs> uh, a Terminator has one line. And uh, this, this, there was these two pages, two pages in the middle. They must have been glued together by bullshit, and I didn't see them. And there were page, two pages of solid dialogue. And I was like, "What do you mean?" The makeup lady, she came. She said, "So you ready for your close up, basically, for your dialogue?" I was like, "What dialogue? I had just killed people." No, no, no. Look, look, and I look at, and there's like two pages of dialogue. I was like, "I can't memorize all this." I got so nervous, you know. So I had like one thousand takes. I. It was the most embarrassing thing in my life. You know, I thought I'd never work in Hollywood again. I never worked for that company again, that's for sure. They didn't take it lightly. I, I got yelled at the first time in my life, and I'm an overachiever, so it wasn't really that good for me. Uh, but it helped me in my future career to never, ever not know my lines. Or at least now I read a script. I have nightmares. Sometimes I wake up fully in bathed in sweat, dreaming that I don't know my lines because of this. As That's you know, on the set, you were there, Jason. If you saw how the director is snapping at people when they don't know their lines or they screw them up, have you noticed this? Of course, time? of course. I mean, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, there's no mercy. There is no mercy. Uh, you time professional is money. people. Yeah. yeah, time is money. So yeah, other than that, uh, that was great movie, full of explosions, real life explosions. That if you don't watch, it takes your freaking head off, and you're done for. And you run for your life or you duck for your life or you. Well, that's the other thing I really wanted to ask you about is there is an explosion at the beginning of that movie that looked like it was just frying the hair off your head. It would look. So yeah, it intense. was. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was so bizarre because the what's his name? He's a German guy. He worked on every A movie in the world. He was the best explosion man in Hollywood. And uh, he rigged this entire house with explosives and I visited him because he's German. So we chatted in German and I'm realizing oh, this is not normal. Where are you going to go with it? To the moon? He says, no, it's going to unforgettable explosion. Unforgettable. This will, this will kill everybody. You know, he was like this. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, Oh my God. So we shoot it. Next thing you know, uh, uh, where's the crew? And there's a fire marshal, the fire trucks. I couldn't find anybody. I'm the only one in front of the house. And I said, this is not good because why are they hiding behind me? Why is the camera buried into the desert, into the earth? Why is the fire marshal hiding behind the building? <laughs> so I went to the director and I said, something is not right. I'm not doing it. I have a bad feeling. And he said, we must shoot it, Matthias. We must shoot it. I said, okay, then let's do it together. So he stood with me in the, in the line of fire outside of the periphery of the camera, right? But in the same line of fire. And we did our Hail Marys and boom, thing goes. The door comes at me. The nails come at me. The fire comes at me. And I'm like, pure luck. None of us get killed. Pure luck. You, you watch it. You see us being engulfed in fire. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I was almost angry. But it was happy when it was over, you know. Because of that. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, well, they weren't like, oh, we didn't get it. We had to do another take. <laughs> oh, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I remember watching it. I don't remember what I said, but just being blown away at how yeah. close you looked to that explosion. In there. In there. That, the door flow flies by. and poof. Well, the director was right. It looked great. And it really added to the movie. <laughs> Listen, when I shot Dark Angel... It was the same thing. The director said, you just have to run faster. <laughs> Good call. You know? 
We yeah. want to see it. We want to see it. It's you. Yeah. Well, yeah. the German guy nailed the explosions in Digital Man. I mean, Ooh. Ooh. there's so much fire in that movie. It's wild. Yeah. I loved it. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. So the movie was great. I had great memories other than that. Um, it, it was a... I love the movies. This is a typical example of the 80s. It was 90s. So, But these films were 35 millimeter. They were not low budget, you know. Yeah. There were millions of dollars, the production, millions. Uh, under five, but around there. So these are real movies, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're shooting a 35 millimeter, just the film and oh. processing alone oh. adds so oh. much to the budget. It's oh, the wild. editing and the music and building the sets. They take it so seriously. People should be ashamed of themselves today sometimes compared to what they did. Mm. Yeah, you know? that's true. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but it's wild. Like Digital Man, I think I have that on Laserdisc. I don't know if that's on DVD or not. And it's like... Maybe. I've, I've never heard of this, and it's a shame because it's so much freaking fun. There's just so many movies from that era that, yeah, yeah. some of them are ridiculous, and they don't. Some of them didn't give a shit about the story; they just wanted explosions. But I love that stuff. So, yeah, you love it. It's your. It's basically also part of your job, and um, so you really know the difference between hokiness and sometimes it's so you know it's so bad it's good, right? Because it's like, oh, this is surprisingly. I mean, I've seen many of your shows. And I have to admit, sometimes you are as surprised as everybody else. You say, wow, this is actually really freaking good. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And as much as it is really freaking bad, but a lot of goodness came out of these films. A lot of cult figures. Yeah. And uh, um, even B-movies have copies of, uh, there were copies made of B-movies, which you end, eventually end up in the sea world. <laughs> oh, I've seen some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've seen them, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I probably got like four beside me right now. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they so also yeah. have a they also have a a place in the world, you know. Of course, of course. Honestly, I feel like that's half of my show is I want to highlight movies people maybe wouldn't watch and be like, no, no, no. There's some real enjoyment in a lot of these. Yeah, there there really is. If you allow yourself to have that state of mind, get away from Netflix and watch this. Right? Yeah. You yeah. find enjoyment, and un sometimes unknowingly, it's funny. Well, I mean, that's what I'm looking for in particular. But yes, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I watched a, a movie with Cynthia Undefeatable that she did. That is like the perfect. Example I saw that. that. I saw that show. I saw that. <laughs> that movie is so bad, but it's freaking hilarious to watch. I mean, it's. I know, it's, and I know people so that, are, that are in it. I know the people that are in it, and uh, they did their best. Uh, oh yeah, it's yeah. it's the director. The guy is a legendary goofy director out of Hong Kong. What was that? What was the name? Of Godfrey Ho. Oh yeah, I heard of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Oh I think my I, god. Yeah. I think I what oh, about yeah, that so Christmas? What about that Christmas movie? Oh my god, I have to ask her about that. What is that I Christmas movie? The, I don't know, but I remember talking to Cynthia, saying, "I'm doing a movie which is kind of like a drama, and this is new to me." And uh, and I thought, oh, uh, Cynthia, that is great. You're doing something else. You know, you're doing a drama. But she had no, that was before she started the movie. So I guess, I don't know if anybody involved in this movie knew what they were involved in. Till it's, till Santa they were Summer involved House. In Santa Summerhouse is the name of that. With yeah, all the martial artists in it playing croquet. Like, what? You is know, this? It, it's, I have, I've watched it and I thought, how is this even possible? And I have deepest respect for every single actor in this movie because I know what they are capable of doing. And I yeah. thought, how did they? It's almost a roost. I, I. That's why I want to ask her about it. I don't, is this like a like a tax write off for the director's vacation house? Like I, it's I such know. a strip. I picked it because of all the martial arts in it. I was like, oh, we're right. gonna get like a martial arts Christmas movie here. Yeah. No, yeah. no. they play. I've never seen play. anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. It's this interesting. Yeah. It's like that Wiesman guy, Tommy Wiesman. What was this guy? Tommy Wiseau? Like, to, yeah. The room, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Ah, and anyway, God bless everybody that does something at least. But this was a surprise and um, shows that as an actor, sometimes you're being sold something, you sign on, and then next thing you know, you're like, holy cannoli. Hey, I mean, 
she got paid. I'm just, I want to know the story. Like, how, like what was this supposed to be? <laughs> Cause, uh, it's wild. Um, I also, I think th- this will come out next Tuesday. And I think the Thursday after we have, we're watching one of your movies called mission of justice. Ooh. Uh, which Ooh, that's one of my favorite movies. Oh man. It's so much. I'm just going to ruin it for everybody. Now I freaking love this movie. I had never oh. seen a Jeff Wincott film before. Oh, he, he is great. Huh? Uh, is he good or what? Yeah, uh, the action in this. Then, is I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it, but it's in my book. Well, I shouldn't be too specific, but this was probably one of the best times I had in my life. Yeah. Oh, huh. oh yeah. Look, it was when the what was it in the nineties, eighties, nineties, where the golden time for low budget action movies. They were shot rather expensively. Um, they put a lot of effort into the sets. It was like you were in a real movie. You know, you came to the set. There were like trucks everywhere, the best cameras, it, everything the best. Huge trailers. We had big. Tra- I mean, it was just really, really cool. And uh, the fights and everything. You could, we had time with it. Uh, that was just a pleasant experience, you know. Oh man! Uh, good producer Pierre David. He produced Internal Affairs with Richard mm-hmm. Gear. I mean, the guy knew what he was doing. You know, it. it dude, I I was really blown away by this, and I got to yeah. tell you, I laughed so hard at one moment in this, where oh, really? at the end you're beaten up. I, I think it must have been Wincott. And you <laughs> yeah. you open your coat, and you're wearing the championship belt right. <laughs> under your yeah. coat. I stole it. Oh my god, dude! I laughed so hard at that. I'm like he's been wearing this belt the whole movie. Like he steals yeah. it at the beginning, and now he just wears a championship yeah. belt. Absolutely, oh. I, I still have his belt. Really? No. I uh, wish oh. I would. <laughs> in hindsight, you don't think about it when you're on the set to take certain things and ask for it to keep them. That would have been a good one to have. That would be a good one to have. That would have been a good one. Yeah, man, I uh, I can't wait to uh, to edit that and have that episode come out because that's one of those movies. I was like, how have oh. I never seen this? Ooh, it's so it entertaining. Was. Ooh. There's a couple of movies of mine that you haven't seen that uh, if I have to, I mean, it's not all about me, but since we are talking now, that are bizarre, some of them. Uh, uh, Starcrypt. Have you ever seen Starcrypt? Is that available somewhere? Starcrypt? Yeah. I don't know. That doesn't ring a bell. Oh my god! It. I don't want to say too much, but it's so bad that I'm curious to see how good you will rate it. Um, good luck finding it. Okay, I then see it here on IMDb. Yeah, huh. yeah. Or the protector. The protector. Or yeah, the protector. Have. Um. Oh my God, I've done three or four that are literally ooh, so interesting. All right. Well, I will look for Starcrypt, but I don't I don't have that. I'm looking in my database here. I don't okay. have that. But if you want to have a really it. interesting one where you really in you know Fred Olin Ray? Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> oh yes. So we did a wonderful movie that I didn't know what I would get into, but I signed up and I did it. Uh called Droid Gunner. With, Droid Gunner. Uh, I think I have that. Mark Singer. Beastmaster. Oh, yeah. 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 So this is so interesting, this movie, because it has, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> I can't even say it. It's so funny. It's a sci fi movie <laughs> where I kidnap and transport pleasure droids through the, sp- through space from one planet to another. And these are pleasure droids and they're t- completely out of control. Uh, you cannot imagine. And these were all Playboy models and whatnot, right? So uh, I, was, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm in this movie. These treasure droids, uh, droids are all over the place, and I'm wrangling them, trying to get them from A to B in my spaceship. It's such a hokey story, but it's really nice to look at for certain men that drink a lot of beer. Um, Speaking my language. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear, this movie is going to make you happy. Droid Gunner. All right. I will uh, definitely check Whoa, it out. What a classic. But you think, wow. Wow. So I, I have to tell you a story real quick. I did Droid Gunner 
I did also I come in peace, right? So you're going from I come in peace to droid gunner, which as an actor you dope. You know what I mean? And yeah. I have a fan club in Germany. <laughs> so I go to the fan club, there's this big event, blah blah blah. And uh, she said, We just watched Droid Gunner. Matthias, if you want to ruin your career <laughs> That's the way to do it. This you is know, the woman running the, the fan club? Yeah. You <laughs> you you're the dark angel. Uh how the in the world she was German. Did you end up in that movie? You know? And I wanted to say it's a classic, it's Fred Owen Ray. You don't understand. This is Hollywood royalty. This is like, you know, this is really like a, this is interesting, you know. Uh well anyway, she saw it the way it is. And she's a woman, so it's usually this man movie is geared for men, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And lots of I, beer. I am looking forward to this one. This is <laughs> Star Crypt. All right, I'm looking forward to that too. Oh, Star Crypt is so boring, it's like you it was an oh. attempt to do a movie with a monster and all this. And um, it is so bizarre, I have to say. Jason, I was in the peak of my career. I I was built like Arnold, you know, like as you uh, have to be as an action star, you know. And I was itching to show it, and I'm ready. And then I had this friend. She produced this movie. And it's like, you know, you're a bunch of actors. You said, I'll do it. I, we're all put together our efforts and we shoot this and we shot this for like nothing. And uh, <laughs> it's just one of those films. I've never even seen it. I wish I could see it because I thought this can't be anything, you know? And I, I was thinking to myself, here I am fully muscled up, ready to, and then I'm in this movie, but I can't help but give it a, give it all. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, that's what you paid for. Yeah. Like all of us, we, we, we give it all, you know, against all odds. Uh, and the poster looked so good. But the movie, huh. I don't think we ever finished it. It was only 76 minutes. And I remember seeing, like, the opening for five minutes. You see the credit school. Uh, just, you know. <laughs> Always a good sign. It's the best sign ever, yeah. It only has 57 ratings on mm. IMDb, so I wonder if it never got a proper release. No, I can't find it. There's a huh. few movies I, I just can't find. Protector, The Company Man is another one I can't find. I, I'm dying to see it because there's uh, some names in it, like Frank Zagarino and others uh, that are incredible martial artists. So I don't know. I, I really don't know what happens to those movies, you know? Hmm. Well, now that we're saying this, I guarantee some people are going to track these down and send them to me. So oh, that I'll would let be you know if I get them. That would be... I would love to see them, and uh, I'll be sitting there watching you watching it. <laughs> so... Uh, it's it's bad movie Inception, I guess. Uh, speaking of um, just being here on YouTube uh, and interacting with people, you are going in on your own YouTube channel now reading chapters of your book. Yeah, you know, each time I talk to you or David, Viking Samurai, or anybody for that matter who has a huge following in terms of a community that watches these type of movies, you know, People say, um, why? Uh, I wish I would. Uh, this is kind of interesting what you say. I have so many stories. Um, you know, what, what did we do when we were together? We were, I, I was probably talking you to, into the ground, did I not? Uh, I with, loved it. I, I could talk movies all day, every day, and that's what we did. Yeah. It was a ton of fun. So I was thinking, um, I want to share this with the audience. It's not a, a, like a, a job or something. It's just me sharing things personally with you in terms of I wrote a book, Shirtless in Hollywood. And that is my love story to Hollywood because I, I came to Hollywood to make it. Yeah. Uh, as just a regular guy with a bunch of muscles arrived at Goldstream in Venice. And there I was. And I thought, I'm going to be one of those action stars, if not the action stars, right? G action star. And it is such an, Crazy story. Uh, what you happens have a when lot you of crazy stories? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, it's so interesting to me, and maybe for others. What happens if you do this? What, what can happen? How did you even do this? And what you encounter on your road to either making it or almost making it or still hoping to make it, whatnot. So uh, I decided I'm going to read out of my book, chapter by chapter by chapter. And uh, so you can just sit there, listen, and I'll take you into the world of what happens to you if you go to Hollywood to try to be an action star. It's insane. It's funny. 
it's up and down. It goes all over the place in terms of developments and what happens is just, if I look back, uh, when I wrote it, I thought, oh man, this is just crazy. I could not do this again because it takes so much effort. And there's, it's almost like you go to Las Vegas and, um, you gamble. No matter how good you are, there's always the house in Hollywood to come to Hollywood to become an actor. Yes, you can do it, but there's the house. And you need luck, you need perseverance, timing. There's a lot of things. You may have a better shot in Vegas almost, you know. And I want to share this. I want to share this. So, uh, Excited. yeah, just listen to it. Uh, kick back. It's going to be only f uh, seven minutes, ten minutes. Uh, then there will be the next chapter of the book, you know. Uh, the book is huge. I mean, we're talking about almost 570 pages. <laughs> so uh, you'll be entertained for a while there. That that's all I do. I mean, that doesn't. It's not my day job. It's just I love sharing these stories. And if you like, come visit, listen, and uh, yeah, that's what I can do for you. I can share it. You know, I think it's a great idea because yeah, we talked a lot of movies, but you also were just telling me crazy ass stories of your life, and yeah. I think people would love to hear this stuff. So put it out okay. there on YouTube because of they're film it. related. That's it. You know, they're all film related. Yeah, but like, uh, I, don't, I don't even want to say some of the stories. I don't know what all <laughs> yeah, I could say or not, but uh, you lived a very wild life, man. It's, it's yeah. very neat. Thank you. And you know what? I'm still in it. Yeah, you're still writing uh, new chapters. Oh, my God. Uh, this is not normal life, no. No, you it's do not, not live a normal life. That is no, for sure. None of us, yeah. I, I'm not the only one. I'm just saying it's not normal. Yeah. And you can't get out of it. I wouldn't know what else to do. Uh that's it. That's your life. You you live it. You live it. Um, yeah. We all make life choices, you know. Yeah, I th I feel like a lot of it is your um, the way you write your book. It's y yes, your life is way different than most people's, but you write it from like an everyman perspective. Like because I'm a everyman. Can you believe I'm an this happened? Man. Is like kind yeah. of the way it's written, you know. But this is what the interesting part. I'm an everyman. I'm J I'm Jason. I'm Paul. I'm whatever. I'm just a normal guy. Uh, I grew up normal, like we all do. And then at one point, I didn't, I, I was like, I, let me just, tr I, I feel like, I, yeah, I just took it. I didn't know I was actually preparing for it. And then I went to Hollywood and everybody said, you crazy. You're not Brad Pitt. You're not good looking enough. You're not this enough. You're never enough anyway. And I thought, well, let's just see about that. Because I had one role model. That was, uh, I never really had that many, but that one was, uh, there's two. One is Jean-Paul Bermondo, which you most likely not know, Doesn't is a that. French actor who became the most thought after action actor in France. And he was a boxer. He was so ugly uh, that everyone says, you're too ugly to be in the movies. And he became the biggest action star. And I thought, oh. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to, you know what I mean? You don't have to be like Brad Pitt and all this bullshit. Just be something and don't be someone else. Be yourself. So I'll take me to Hollywood the way I am. And I'm German. So how are the Germans? The Germans are, I speak like this, you know, to begin with. That's how I got there. And they have, uh, I had long blonde hair and muscles in Bavarian shorts, Bavarian shorts, you know, and muscle shirt. And I walked around there. And people were like, what? who are you? We should put you in the movies. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. how it happened. Yeah. It's a, I think that's what makes it relatable. It's just the every man style. Exactly. Like you said, just, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. We, you know, we all could do it. I can, Jason, I can tell you tomorrow, sell everything, go to Holland, become an actor. Uh, about a, two years later, you write the first 10 chapters of the book. How you mentioned perseverance. That seems to me to be a very com probably the common trait between people who have levels of success is yeah, especially grinding, like really yeah. going after it. It's really grinding. The problem is with becoming a movie star that um, you cannot pursue another career while you do it because you have to make a living. And anything that where you make a living takes you away from you trying out to be an actor, meaning. And then let's just say you have a YouTube channel, right? Which is awesome. 
but it eats up six to eight hours a day. You cannot stray away from it. So it's hard. You get a movie, uh, you're gone. Your channel dies, whatever, right? Yep. Uh, you sell cars, you can't because the guy says, well, I just hired you. You're constantly going on. Audition. Yeah, but my audition is at 4 o'clock. Well, 4 o'clock, you're still working, buddy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then uh, all your friends get married, have great jobs, drive nice cars, whatever, and you you still live on the couch. Now, let 10 years go by. Interesting story. Uh, and then it's thing. like, oh, it's not only tough. It drives you crazy because here's what uh, – small story, small story. I'm okay. at the Rolf supermarket in Brentwood. And I have a group of friends. We're all struggling. Either you're a model or you're an actor. Nothing in between. Or singer. One of my friends met LeBlanc. So I was working in the nightclub as a bouncer. And he was uh, just a good-looking model with jobs here and there coming in. You know, I really liked him. We talk a lot. We both want to be actors. Then I don't see him for a couple of years. I see him at the uh, Ralph supermarket in Brentwood. He's carrying a six pack of beer and he looks rather unkept. And I'm like, Oh man, Matt LeBlanc, what the, what's going on? How are you doing? And he's like, you know what, Matthias? I'm, um, I, I, I booked a job. I'm on a couch, but I booked a job and they're going to pick me up with a limo tomorrow. And I said, Oh, what's, what is your book? He said, friends. That's a story. Matt LeBlanc <laughs> becomes one of the highest paid actors. In Hollywood, for 11 years, doing Friends, went from the couch to who knows where in Beverly Hills, and you look like, oh, this could happen to me? I'm right. sticking with it. I was actually living on the couch at that moment, too. And you knew him from, from what? Just a group of friends? Yeah, we all know each other. I know everybody in Hollywood. I mean, it's like, uh, here's how you know people. Coffee shops, dog parks, the gym neighborhood we all talk i live in an apartment building where this is so cool next to me is this young hot upcoming actor right it was suddenly in all the movies but he still lives in a one-bedroom apartment i'm with the biggest agency in hollywood at that time who has every action star in hollywood gersh right uh who has kevin zobe van damme dolph Lundring, all these guys it's my agent so i'm the next upcoming guy across the street from me we have two pools in the building, works uh, legally. My agent, uh, who who represents and sends me out to movies, and she's a really young, hot, attractive girl, and I'm single. And we're lounging at the pool together. It's just you live this life of, I don't know, I can't explain it. It's just really different. But And then from there, you can go like this. Or you see your neighbor go like this. He moves out. Your agency drops you, and you're back on a couch right. or something. And it's all—it's just unbelievable how this can go from one to the next. Uh, and this is a very exciting lifestyle. If you have the nerves for it, if you're young, if you have something, you must be realistic. Not everybody can become a movie star. It has nothing to do. Uh, uh, with your looks, with the muscles or something. It is something in you that could make you an actor that everybody wants to see. So uh, I based my entire career on, on my muscles and my this, you know, and other people don't have this. And they get much further, much faster, or not at all. It's like you got to just uh, be good at what you do. You got to know what you are, Yeah, you know? Or as a comedian or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's such a wild industry, man. It's um, the sacrifice yeah, it's is incredible. Wild. Uh, and I have the deepest respect for every movie, especially your show. Every show, every movie that you show has real life people living in this treadmill of Hollywood, doing a movie on either favors, low budget, no budget, big budget. They all hope to do the best they can do. And once or the while, people that do not belong in the business sneak in. Producers, actors, directors, uh, vanity people, they sneak into this and you're like, whoa, that's uh, not going to work. 
yeah, this is a feast, and that's why your show comes about. But because there's a lot of those, and you, as an actor, you have to stay away from these people in a way. Because, but you're not always aware of it. Who is a player? Who is wrong? Who is real? Who promised you and this and that? You go through all this, and then you end up in a movie like Droid Gunner, uh, which I truly enjoyed. I truly enjoy this movie, and I admire Fred Olin Ray. I love this man. So I'm not putting it down. I'm I'm just saying you go from Dark Angel from a big studio movie to uh, an experimental classic Hollywood producer that is known to do uh, these type of films. I did Roger Corman movie with Don Wilson, Black Belt, right? Oh, I have Black Belt. I haven't watched it yet, but I have that. Oh, yeah, that is uh, a Roger Corman movie. Roger Corman used to own a studio in Venice, which is. Uh, history now, right? There's a parking lot in there now, which I parked my car to go to Gold's Gym, ironically. Used to be a, a, a studio, and I worked in that studio, and I was very proud to work there because every A-lister in this industry started out with Roger Corman. Yeah, guys yeah, a legend. Not every, reasons. but most, yeah. And this movie was solidifiably a good movie uh, for what it's worth, and uh, that was the Roger Corman world. Uh, interesting, and I, it, 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 I have so many stories about the Roger Corman world. I, I just tell you one. A friend of mine produces a movie, three point five million dollar budget, on that lot, where he didn't know that they were producing at night. When he left, the producer that was somewhat involved in it, low budget, like I don't know how many low budget films at night on that dime, like strip tease but then they call it uh stripper tease or something <laughs> okay <laughs> actual yeah, yeah. 35 millimeter films uh with real actors so we rap nobody knows then the next bunch of actors comes in all the cameras are there and they just work around it i mean these people were so clever oh yeah roger corman could stretch a dollar like nobody else wow and he did good movies i mean i'm telling you uh they were solid 35 millimeter they had good stories you know yeah yeah this was yeah, an era and we've you, gotten into yeah. some of his sword and sandal movies he did in the 80s uh, yeah, 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 yeah. barbarian Interesting, queen right all those yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's kind of entertaining because it's its own world yeah it, you can see he keeps shooting them in the same locations they're just at like different angles yeah. or sometimes yeah. it's at night sometimes it's during the day it's and it's it was literally a parking lot in venice Wow. Where there's so they, a parking lot now. They tore all that down, huh? And that's a parking yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as it is, the studio was suddenly gone. That parking lot has a, a huge meaning for me because uh, I shot there. Uh, and Goldstrom is across the street. That's my home, basically, you know. And uh, then I parked my car there. <laughs> it's like, uh, wow. That's wild, man. All mm -hmm. right, well, I won't take up any more of your time. It was uh, an absolute blast hanging out with you. On the last Kumite, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it, and you know, I've I've actually said this to people. Um, I am the opposite of David Viking Samurai. He is a super Ooh, yeah. self promoter. Like that guy, yeah. yeah. He I, he was on set taking people's phones and subscribing them to his YouTube channel, like individually. And Seriously? I tell, and I wow. never promote myself at all in that way. I just don't like doing wow. it. Wow! But you promoted. Like nobody there would have probably even known I had a YouTube channel if it wasn't for you. You told everyone on that set about so bad it's good. So uh, oh, I good. really because, appreciated that. Uh, you're very welcome because I like your show. I like you as a person. I was happy you were there. We we hit it off. We we had great stories, great times. I love meeting you. Wonderful wife, who I'm still in awe of. What a athletic person she is. You know, we never get to see you both standing up. When you both walked in, I said, damn, look at those two. Yeah, she's six feet tall. Yeah, she's... yeah, yeah, yeah. And in top shape, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you both are very impressive uh, people. Uh, and um, that was fun. Oh, channel, back. Now I'm, I'm David. Now <laughs> watch <laughs> my channel, subscribe, and this and that. Yeah, right. Uh, back to the 80s, Matthias Hughes. So that's the channel. When are you um, going to start posting your chapters? Soon? Yeah, in the next five days, I guess. Oh, okay. So probably before this is out then, or right around then. Perfect. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, right around then. And um, David is the character, huh? 
Oh yeah, he, I I get along he, with him so well. Yeah, that's what I mean. He he just he just did that fight. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the celebrity boxing, and uh, he won. Mm -hmm. And you're right. He does everything he does is 100. percent Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I wasn't sure going into it if he and I would get along because we're so different, and we just got along yeah. incredibly well. He's just yeah, like, because he's great. he's a really nice guy. Yeah, had a blast. He, he really is, just like you, a very down to earth and talkative, and uh, likes to share. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> yes, he does. But uh, man, I really want to have you on again because I was so upset. I didn't think we'd be able to record uh, so bad. It's good in Germany. That's why I didn't have one of your movies. And we ended up doing, um, God, what was that? Oh, I can't even think of the name of it now. But I would love to watch like Droid Gunner with you or something sometime. So Absolutely. I don't know how we're going to make it happen, but that'd be great. Uh, it's pretty easy on StreamYard, I would assume. Oh, yeah, maybe we could do something like that. Yeah, yeah, think. because you guys can watch it. And, uh, well, you're the expert. I'm just, I don't know. We'll figure something out. But uh, We'll figure something out. Yeah, if it's, I, For Droid Gunner... I, I'd be totally game, huh? All right. That sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> all right, yeah. man. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, I'll talk to Thank you soon. You. Talk to you soon, and all the best, huh?